Berkeley was an you know, undescribable experience. I mean, Berkeley at the time was, uh, to the theoretical computer science, was getting and must have been, you know, a century before to mathematics. So we had um, uh, Manuel Blum, Dick Karp, Andy Yao, you name it. He was really a place to be. And of course, I was absolutely in awe of the place and terrified by the whole experience. And uh, moreover, I, 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 my English was so poor. And then I met also a very totally different uh, educational system in which you are tested on the last day of the course and there are homework, 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 so somebody checks that you're actually learning on the, on the way in parallel on four courses. I, it wasn't for me. I failed tremendously on everything. So I decided somehow I must find some way to declare victory and go home. Fuck <laughs> my bags. <laughs> it was a mistake. So chance have it that I meet somebody else, which is um, before going home. And uh, so because I, my English was saying so poor, they wanted a TOEFL exam, a test of English as a foreign language. I had such an abysmal score that they could not let me in in September. So I joined in March and they had the trimester courses. So I joined in March. I, by a bunch of prerequisites, not knowing anything about computer science, I take courses like CS1, you can imagine, right? So I am about 24. I'm 17 years old uh, as a thing, so no friendships, no nothing. Uh, it was a disaster. Plus, this educational system. I come out of the trimester, decided to leave. I meet David. We strike a friendship, and David Lichtenstein says, you know, so, okay. So, by the way, he decoded my English because he used to, I used my hands. How did he figure out? Once he, he gave me a ride to show. Uh, the, the, the good spots in San Francisco, and he couldn't understand me because I could, by driving, he could not uh, look into a lot of the hands. So I said, okay, so here is what you need to do. Come back in the fall, don't be afraid. But you need to find an advisor. The most wonderful advisor on earth is Manuel Blum. Good news is that he's from Caracas. Why was that good news? Because according to David, they say, he knows Spanish, so he can understand Italian. <laughs> okay, so... Eh, Esclaro, e claro, you see, it's the same thing. <laughs> so just go and talk to him. Okay, so I went and made an appointment uh, with Manuel. Uh, it was, he says, well, you know, I tell you the truth, I'm too engrossed in this uh, business of doing the department, of running the department. I mean, I don't know what I want to do. I don't want to say yes uh, now anyway, so it takes a year. A year from now is another story and so on and so forth. So I reported back to David, says, thank you for the trying, but you know, he's not getting any students. So that's because you have not solved the problem he wants to see solved. So all we have to do is to solve a problem. So I come back, after a few days, I solve the problem, I told David, he says, wonderful, now you go and tell Manuel. Uh, and he says, I, I found a solution to this problem. And Manuel, you know, I raised the board, asked me to put the solution on the thing, and at the end, agreed to take me as a student, but he still wasn't teaching courses for the next year. So, but, I'm saying, but at least he agreed to advise me. So, now I came back to Berkeley, and now I'm in the fall, and I take, you know, a, a lectures on, uh, on algorithm uh, by Dick Karp. Fabulous teacher, my clarity personified, and, uh, and fortunately or unfortunately for me, at the very few beginning of the lectures, he mentioned uh, an algorithmic problem, <laughs> which is uh, uh, to solve uh, a matching problem in general graphs. So we explain a solution for a special type of graphs, which is called the bipartite graphs, okay? Turns out that that is actually computationally not a trivial problem. If you try all combinations, it's too much. And so, and so he mentioned that problem. And then I had, uh, in the course with me, I had a wonderful uh, colleague, you know, uh, Vijay Vazirani, who became uh, a great uh, algorithmist. Uh, and so we decided, you know, we solve the problem. We actually did, but I didn't do anything else. So, and in the course, my, um, Dick Carp gave me a B plus because being the honest man he is, I've solved none of the exercises, done none of the homework, only to show his this algorithm. This algorithm, by the way, continues to be for general graphs, as, as I understand it, the, the fastest algorithm for matching in general graphs. So he was very, very happy and very proud, but you know, I had a B plus. 
And on top of it, you know, I, I didn't do anything in the other course. So the, Dick and Manuel had to intervene to convince the committees, the powers to be, that I was allowed to continue at Berkeley. So I'm very glad that they did, and I'm very glad that they had the flexible rules that allow me to, to continue. Tell you the truth, I would not know would have happened if I didn't have not only the professor I had, but actually the, the fellow classmates that I had. And it was a really not an extraordinary group, and it really made me understand that you know really uh, uh, science is a, is a collective enterprise. Not only it takes a village, it takes more than a village. It takes you know, a scientific community, and that is an international thing, effort in good faith, and, uh, and in some sense, you know, we talk about the, the Turing Award. Awards are perhaps necessarily given to individuals, but it really is, 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 is the field. It is the field that matters.